Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Grey Remnant here. On today's episode of Week in Review, this is the week of uh, July 12th, uh, we're going to be looking at some really cool Minecraft projects, so let's get right into it uh, with Structures of the Week. Uh, the bronze medal goes to a build titled City in Snow by Sorna. This is basically a reproduction of that... Uh, that movie with Dennis Quaid, you know, The Day After Tomorrow, which is basically the same thing as saying two days from now. I don't know. Dumbest name ever. But it's pretty much like New York City covered in snow. You got the Statue of Liberty. Very well done. Uh, you got the cargo ship with some icicles hanging from it. Very, very nice. And then the buildings themselves are very detailed and very accurate uh, as well. This is a really well done uh, rendition straight out of the movie. Uh, so very good job, Sorna. Um, I was pretty impressed by that. Before we move on to the silver medal, I have to issue an apology. I know, right? Why would I have to apologize? I usually It's usually just like, here's the medal. There you go. Everything's good. But I actually told someone this week that they were going to get the gold medal, and I was wrong. They're not getting the gold medal. They're getting the silver medal. Sorry, Manko Mountains, <laughs> whatever your name is. He made uh, this... Blenheim Interchange of Huntington City. I don't know how you pronounce that first bit, but yeah. I was so confident that this was going to get gold uh, when he released it on Wednesday uh, that I just basically said flat out, yep, this is good. You just, I know the gold medal when I see it. It's like, and you can see why. I mean, it's, it's very, very crisp and very, very uh, well detailed. I mean, it's really, really, I don't know how somebody does something like this, like with all the roads and the plane and all the cars and the street lights and everything. It looks some of these some some of these images actually look like a real world. Like this looks like something out of Google Earth, right? I mean, like I'm not crazy. <laughs> That's not just me. This is this is like detailed to the very max. But unfortunately for Menko Mountains, uh Sefer, we can review veteran extraordinaire, swooped down at the last minute and made this, which is called Stalingrad, Blood on the Volga. Yes, so this guy, Sefer, uh, I, don't, I think this is a build team. I don't think this is a single person. I mean, obviously, it's a build team. Look at what he did here. Ready for a history lesson, ladies and gentlemen? So I don't know if you know this, but back in uh, the Second World War, the Nazis invaded and subsequently uh, destroyed the city of Stalingrad in Russia. You might ask how someone could capture all the chaotic destruction with a program as simple as Minecraft. But I don't honestly know the answer to that question. You'll have to ask Sefer. First of all, I'd just like to take a moment to admire the fact that Sefer took a great deal of time building a replica of some of the most well-known sites in Stalingrad, only to go through the painstaking aftertask of blowing it all to smithereens. That's called effort, ladies and gentlemen. It's just like all the architecture is just like riddled with glorious structural damage like caved in roofing tanks blown asunder and crumbling monuments and you got uh, bombers tanks missiles and explosions laying waste to everything and i do mean everything true story the level of detail is is just so immense and and well thought out that this is probably uh the closest you could get to capturing the nightmarish circumstances stalingrad actually went through in about as much detail as minecraft can possibly allow this is maximally ruinous like it's it's the flaming detritus and smoldering buildings is just absolutely fantastic and you've got this render which was, I think, supplied by Nazi797. Yeah, this this should this shouldn't be legal. This is way too good. Stop it, Nazi797. You're making us all feel bad. <laughs> the scenery is so calamitous that it actually looks like a scene that's unfolding rather than just a model. You know, there's like this sort of fluid nature to this that gives the map an eerie and unsettling reality. It's kind of interactive, even though none of the structures actually move in their own right. Uh, I don't know where Sefer gets the time to pour all their attention into projects like this. Uh, but I'd say the effort shows. Uh, I'd say we should uh, use this as the standard for all future builds. <laughs> I'd love to see more projects like this. So really good job, Sefer. You definitely earned the gold medal. Sorry, Mako Mountains. Apologies. Blame Sefer. He's a monster. <laughs> Next, terraforming. Terraforming of the week. Uh, the bronze medal for terraforming goes to a terrain titled Del Tethrate. And I'm almost certainly pronouncing that incorrectly. By Jazzy Z401. Interesting name. Uh, this is basically like an alien planet covered in purple goo and the mountains are like yeah they're, they're all purple you got these like mushroom structures sticking out everywhere it's it's pretty bizarre it kind of reminds me of uh that uh 
terrain that won the first episode of Weekend Review. You know, remember Planet B412 or whatever it was called by Park Vader? Yeah, this is kind of like that, kind of reminiscent of that. Yeah, yeah it's pretty, pretty bizarre. Um, so well done, Jazzy Z401. Uh, moving on to the silver medal, uh, which goes to a terrain titled The Protector of the Swamp, Swamplingen. By Pixel Beaster. I know, Pixel Beaster, again, for the 50 millionth time, has grabbed another medal. <laughs> uh, this is just like a, a massive uh, swamp like terrain filled with some nice architecture, some buildings, a lot of custom trees. There's one really, really good tree kind of in the middle. And you've got some organic figures as well. You got an eagle, you've got some sort of giant bear. Which is terrifying as shit. Like he li he has this little lair beneath like this weeping willow tree. Pretty terrifying. But the ter the terrain is awesome, and everything that's sprinkled over it is is pretty awesome as well. And you got a nice windmill in there. Um, so very good job, uh, Pixel Beaster. Once again, sn snatching another medal away from other weekend review hopefuls. Uh, <laughs> moving on to the gold medal, uh, which goes to a new. Uh, person on Weekend Review, someone I've never seen before, um, Cubion, who created a map titled Temple of Champions, or oh, the Temple of Champions. This is a project that incorporates structural, environmental, and organic elements to create, you know, kind of a lively landscape. Um, it's definitely a, an environment with a lot of character and intriguing ele elements. Uh, Temple of Champions is like something out of a Greek odyssey. Uh, the, te the temple itself sits atop uh, this kind of uh, massive crumbling landscape full of ravines, cliffs, swirling earth, uh, with a few bridges and staircases on top to make uh, different areas more accessible. Um, you got clouds, trees, and a particularly elegant statue. Um, as well as this really impressive golden trident just sticking out of the water with ripples emanating behind it. Uh, when you look at this in its totality, it does bear a resemblance to something out of a big-budget Hollywood movie starring Liam Neeson. <laughs> you know? Somebody release the Kraken! Immediately! Release the Kraken! What I really like about this map is the fact that it uses structures and organic work to enhance what is otherwise a fairly straightforward landscape. Simplicity can be effective when it's combined with other, more diverse elements. And all in all, I would say that this is a very impressive nugget of terraforming goodness with some nice goodies sprinkled over it. So very well done, uh, Cubion. Uh, which brings us to organic work. Uh, the bronze medal for organic work this week goes to a build titled Huge Middle Earth Creatures Bundle by Penguin Entei. Yes, this is basically a bunch of stuff from the Lord of the Rings. And he put a lot of effort into this. I think there's, I believe that there's 10. I believe that there's uh, 10 figures here. And I'm not, a, I'm not a big Lord of the Rings uh, nerd, so I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce some of these things because I really don't care. There's a cave troll. I can pronounce that. Um, they're really, really well done. And, uh, and there's a lot of them. You've even got Gollum at the end. <laughs> nice. I don't know why Gollum is bigger than all the other things. He is. He's, he's much larger scale, which is odd. Um, but very, very well done, Penguin Ente. Second week in a row, he got a medal. Wow, I think that gets you the uh, uh, on a roll badge. Congratulations, Penguin Ente. You must be proud of yourself. He doesn't care. Next, next silver medal goes to a build titled Whale Challenge Build by Pluto You There. Pluto, you there uh, on Weekend Review all the time. Uh, basically, someone named uh, Nina Man Official gave him this picture right here. This is real. Or, no, it's not real. It's, it's art, obviously. Obviously, this isn't a real photograph. <laughs> this is a painting. Okay, yeah, you, you get it. Uh, and he made this out of it. Uh, he made some nice uh, organic whales just flopping around in the sky with a lot of clouds. I think the clouds are made of, like, white glass and... Um, and cobwebs, I think. I, I, you have to take a close look. I think it's mostly just white glass, though. Uh, but yeah, these, this is this is pretty, <laughs> pretty amazing concept. Uh, but Pluto, you there is well known for doing stuff like this, doing stuff that really just is beautiful and autistic. So so well done, Pluto, you there. You definitely earned another silver medal to add to your collection. Uh, moving on to the gold medal for organic work, the last build of the week. Which is a build titled Transmarine Treasure Map by Jim Jobway. Jim Jobway was on Week in Review a long time ago and he hasn't been on since. But uh, he's definitely earned this gold medal. Uh, I would like to point out that this project definitely won the organic category this week. Uh, there was nothing even close. And in hindsight, I don't think there was any possibility this map wasn't going to be the standout organic project this week. <laughs> It's, it's just, it's, this is an utterly mind-blowing map. And for once, I use the word map because it literally is a map. 
It's a gigantic treasure map that outlines some epic journey through the seas in search of treasure. And yes, all of the elements are three-dimensional islands, boats, hot air balloons, fortresses, and yes, a gigantic terrifying mutant eel monster. All of which sits atop a conventional backdrop of a large pirate map, complete with dotted lines, you got a compass, and a big red X, because the X marks the spot. The structures in and of themselves are fantastic. Uh, the boats have amazing arrays of sails, the land structures are towering and full of detail, and the balloons are a nice touch as well. Oh, and the terraforming is, is nice. Uh, also, but the star of the map is obviously the giant eel monster, which looks like the results of hideous mutations caused by exposure to nuclear waste. Hell, after Fukushima, maybe there actually is one of those things swimming in the Pacific. I wouldn't be surprised at this point. <laughs> the thing I really like about this map is the fact that some of the elements are two-dimensional, and some of them are three-dimensional. It kind of gives the appearance that the map is coming to life, you know, before our very eyes. It's like something out of a pop-up book. But uh, more and more, I think, uh, I'm seeing a lot more maps like this on PMC. Maps that are driven uh, thematically and creatively. It's always nice to see a brilliant idea developed into a successful project through good technology and effort and this is definitely one of those so very well done uh jim jobway and that's it that's it we got through all the medals which brings us to badges of course we have three badges to award this week as i said before penguinente got the on the roll uh badge congratulations penguinente um if you win again if you win a medal next week you get the dynasty badge which has a beautiful blackhawks logo on it <laughs> Uh, Pixel Beaster got the Jack of All Trades badge, and I've made that joke a million times. I'm not going to make it again. Jim Jobway uh, got the Sculptor badge, because he's good at organic work, obviously. After that transmarine treasure map, I think that there's no question he's very good at organic work. So that's it. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you like this video, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share it with your friends. If you're looking at this on PMC, give it a diamond. And of course, spread the wealth. Give some diamonds to the map creators as well. And I will see you guys next week. Uh, please enjoy your wonderful list of qualifiers, as always. Grey Remnant signing out. See you guys. Bye-bye. Five, four, three.